On 6 February 2016, the high-resolution imaging camera on NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, captured a curious image of the surface of Mars. The photo would eventually be published by NASA in July of the same year. Under the provocative heading, Martian Morris Code, the image discloses what are reported to be sand dunes, extending over the desolate surface of the red planet, but unlike any known sand dune configurations on Earth. These Martian dunes, consists of interlocking multi-directional lines, and discontinuous mounds that form a complex grid-like pattern, reminiscent of a circuit board and in some segments, of Morse code. As soon as the image was published by NASA, in what appeared to be a coordinated response, nearly every major news outlet in the United States and many others around the world, ran the story with sensational headlines, heralding the possibility of intelligent life on Mars. Then paradoxically, after provoking the commotion in the first place, NASA roundly denied the notion, that the Martian sand dunes were anything more than a natural occurring event on the surface of Mars, and nothing more. A topographical phenomenon, generated by bidirectional winds. However, since no precedent for such a complex sand dune configuration exists on the Earth, NASA was forced to admit, that they cannot fully explain how the so-called Martian Morse code was actually created. But there actually may be a connection to a similar phenomenon, that does in fact exist here on the Earth. But not in the form of sand dunes. And not naturally occurring. habitation on the moon we can visit other people with their habitation we can keep track if there's something very important to be developed from the moon i'm not sure what it is right now and i sure think we should identify what it is for america to make such gross expenditures again for human habitation on the moon we can help we can join with together we can explore the moon and develop the moon we should go boldly where man has not gone before. Fly by to comets, visit asteroids, visit the moon of Mars. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there? In 2008, the late researcher David Flynn published an article entitled, The Geoglyphs of Tiwanaku. Flynn made an astonishing discovery while viewing satellite images over the regions surrounding the antediluvian megalithic site of Tiwanaku, near Lake Titicaca in the high plains of Bolivia, a region known as the Altiplano. What he discovered was a vast network of strange geoglyphic configurations, comprised of multi-directional lines, rectangular cells, and circular mounds that form a continuous circuit-like grid and extending for hundreds of miles over the Altiplano Plain. Some of the lines are raised above the terrain, while others are engraved into the bedrock at various depths, creating a colorful array of earthen geoglyphs, like the Nazca Lines in Peru. The geoglyphs, of Tiwanaku, can only be viewed from a high-altitude perspective, bringing into question, who were they made for, and why. In his article, Flint postulated that the geoglyphs must have been artificially constructed, but due to the extensive scope, and complexity, could not have been devised by primitive hands. He further proposed that the geoglyphs may represent an unknown arcane written language, or a cipher, similar to Morris code, or more analogously, to a form of communication and calculation, developed or adapted by the Incas called, Kipus and Yupana. Kipus and Yupana, were the Incas only form of recorded communication, while Kipos utilized an integrated system of ropes and knots, varying in size, color, and composition, to convey the Inca's spoken language. Yupana incorporated a system of rectangular cells and circles, to convey numeric values. The Kipos and Yupana cipher, was so complex that it was capable of communicating incredibly detailed information, concerning historical events, census records, calendrical data, and military organization. The decryption of these coded communications was a secret, known only to the Inca elite. When NASA's Morse code on Mars photograph, is compared with the geoglyphs inscribed into the landscape of the Bolivian High Plain, the similarities are apparent. 
Both Earthen and Martian geographic configurations, though composed of different elements, share the same Kipus and Yupana-like characteristics, of interlocked multi-directional lines, rectangular cells, and discontinuous circular mounds. Of course NASA has made no such comparison. At least not publicly. Maybe this is all just coincidental. Or even inconsequential. And maybe it is, but at the very least. It begs the question. Why does NASA continuously provoke the discussion of intelligent life on Mars with one hand? Then ensure us that it is entirely implausible with the other? Might this be a procedure of soft disclosure? Maybe by means of predictive programming. Designed to gradually condition the public, in anticipation of the forthcoming revelation. Concerning Mars, and humanity's contact with alien life. Sometimes NASA seems more like a room full of monkeys. With tape stuck to their butts with no idea how in the hell to take the tape off. Then telling everyone, the tape was always there, and it's a natural occurrence. We find it very hard to believe anything a monkey has to say, with tape on his ass. Whatever the case, the indisputable reality is that whether intentional or not, the world has been thoroughly infused with the idea of extraterrestrial contact. Aliens have been the subject of a multitude of television productions and blockbuster films over the last decade. However, there seems to be a measurable increase of interest into E.T.'s existence as of late. A curious video released by Pepsi Studios Production Company, a subsidiary to the Pepsi Corporation, released a short film on the Internet. Entitled, Black Knight Decoded. The film plays on the popular legend of the Black Knight satellite, an alleged ancient object or satellite of extraterrestrial origin, which has been orbiting the Earth for thousands of years. The object was first discovered in 1899 by Nikola Tesla and its existence confirmed in a photograph released by NASA in December of 1998. Pepsi's Black Knight Decoded film, imagines a scenario in which radio transmissions emanating from the Black Knight satellite, are detected and decoded. The message is ominous. We came to you many thousands of years ago, when your civilization was young. You have grown quickly and efficiently. But you still have so much to learn. If you want us to return, on the night of your next full moon, the people of Earth must show us they are ready. We will be watching. There are many good videos online, breaking down the suggested content embedded in this Pepsi production, so we will not go there today. Except to point out one curious detail. The voice they used in the production, heralding the extraterrestrial message to mankind from the Black Knight satellite, belongs to music's front man, Usher. The reason we wanted to highlight this seemingly trivial detail, is because it seems to almost signal what is believed to be, the plans for the occult endgame. An ancient conspiracy, which aims to literally, usher in the return of the ancient extraterrestrial gods. And to resurrect their antediluvian empire, that was destroyed in the waters of the Great Flood. The most influential institutions on Earth, such as NASA, Hollywood, multinational corporations like Pepsi, and most significantly, the Vatican, seem to all be engaged in a coordinated campaign, of incremental acclamation. Preparing humanity for the arrival, and reception, of its alien saviors. It should be noted that the UFO phenomenon continues to expand. In fact some of the most credible and convincing UFO sightings today, have occurred over the past 10 years. As cameras become more of our daily lives, from dash cams, to cell phone cameras. The footage now being captured, in most cases is indisputable. It seems it will be very hard to hide the truth, very soon. Well, after decades of denial and secrecy and flat-out lying, America's defense establishment is finally admitting some of what it knows about UFOs. It is perhaps most telling, that after many years of avoidance and mockery, the mainstream media is finally being forced to feature this phenomenon with serious consideration. The soft disclosure has started. Are you prepared for what may come next? Are we destined to live in an alien nation? Did movies like Star Wars and Star Trek have it right? Will humans live hand in hand, or hand in claw with alien creatures? Will the new neighbors, be ancestors from the squid family? Are you prepared for that future? On one hand, this may be what this planet needs. To finally unite as brothers and sisters, and stop fighting with each other. And focusing on the real threats. This is why aliens don't invade this planet. Because they can see we are happy killing ourselves, why should they have to lift a finger? They just sit back and watch the show, while we slowly learn to hate each other. Hell, we are doing the aliens a favor. But just maybe. This could be the one thing that can change that. Only time will tell. 
This has been The Confidential Report. For even more stories like this one, make sure to subscribe to our channel today. And please show your support by clicking the like button on this video. For even more stories and news you deserve to know the truth about, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for watching The Confidential Report.